Hey there. I'm Matt Crowley, this is another editorial, and due to the controversy surrounding the Danish girl, it got me thinking a lot about trans and non-binary representation, so let's talk about that. Adapted from the 2000 novel of the same name, The Danish Girl tells a fictionalised account of the life of Lily Elby, historically one of the first identifiable recipients of sex reassignment surgery. Production of a movie version of the book dates back as far as my research can tell to 2009, with acclaimed Swedish filmmaker Thomas Alfredsson attached as director. Since then, the story has gone through quite a few hands, including that of Lass Halström of the Cider House Rules and Dear John fame, but the project is now brought to us by Academy Award winning filmmaker Tom Hooper, who in your eyes is either brilliantly talented or starting to show signs of being a tad overrated, although that ultimately depends on your opinion of his adaptation of Les Miserables. Anyway, to cut to the chase, the Danish girl, in its first announcement and trailer, caught significant blowback from the LGBT community in regards to the casting. Specifically, I'm referring to the casting of Eddie Redmayne, a cisgender male actor, in the role of a transgender character. With many making the argument that whilst Eddie Redmayne is an excellent actor and is probably going to do a really good job of it, truth be told, the point is that transgender and non-binary characters should be allowed to be played by transgender and non-binary actors. In order to make use of their deeper understanding of the community they're trying to depict, as well as providing trans and non-binary actors opportunities to work within in the industry. Similar was the issue of casting Jared Leto as trans woman Rayon in Dallas Buyers Club, as well as more recently the casting of Elle Fanning as a pre-HRT trans man in About Ray. Since the backlash, Tom Hooper has tried to justify the casting by saying that he cast Eddie Redmayne on the basis that he saw a certain gender fluidity in him that he found intriguing, which is an argument that can be basically boiled down to I cast him because he's a guy that looks a bit like a woman and rather misses the point. The point is that transgender and non-binary persons alike are undisputedly the least, or failing that most poorly, represented people in the LGBT community in terms of media and pop culture. Because of the severe lack of representation, anything that does get made in order to depict such characters, regardless of casting or intent, is going to be heavily scrutinised, period. Taking a cue from Bob Chipman, this is something I'm referring to as the Black Widow problem. Fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe have a bit of a gripe with Black Widow, but not for one singular unified reason, instead for a multitude of reasons that all trip each other up. She's simultaneously seen as a symbol of Marvel's progressive, albeit not fast enough, representation of women in superhero fiction, but also draws ire because she doesn't have her own movie yet and is almost always left out of the toy merchandise when it comes to putting together action figures. She's by far Marvel's most prominent female superhero, at least as far as the movies are concerned, and yet the fans are rightly pissed off with what's going on with her as a character, with her being in a relationship with the Hulk and her somewhat troublesome backstory revealed in Age of Ultron, as well as her having a not strictly coherent personality in all the Marvel movies she's appeared in thus far. She's been criticised for not being strong enough and not being sensitive enough, and it's all down to her being the only female Avenger as part of the team. Because she's the only female superhero as part of the Avengers, she unfortunately means all things to all women by proxy. Not that she was intended to be this way by the filmmakers, but she's become the de facto source of female representation in the Marvel Cinematic Universe by accidental omission. The problem doesn't really exist amongst the other characters. No one's saying that Captain America isn't tough enough because there's also Iron Man and the Hulk that occupy that space. Due to Black Widow being the only female superhero on the team, she functionally has to represent all things to all women, which makes her character a complete clusterfuck. Fortunately, Marvel are in the process of fixing this issue with the arrival of characters like Wasp, Captain Marvel, Elektra and Jessica Jones, but the complaint is that the problem A isn't being fixed fast enough and B should never have been a problem to begin with, as if Marvel just assumed that including a character like Black Widow was enough to tick all the boxes. Anyway, to get back on topic, that's what I personally see when it comes to other forms of representation across other media. Because there's not very much in terms of movies and TV shows that directly deal with issues of race and sexuality, what little does arrive undergoes a lot of scrutiny from the communities the work is meant to represent. This is why there's such an outrage over a cisgender actor playing a transgender character, because the art that's meant to be representative is never quite that. And that asking a white actor to play a black character at the expense of a black actor losing a potential job is the same kind of offensive. And I know that some people are going to argue that it should be just as offensive to straight people for a queer actor to play a straight character and that that's a double standard. And I would normally agree, yes, in a perfect world that is a double standard. But in case you haven't noticed, we don't live in a perfect world, we live in a very, very imperfect world. And in such an imperfect world, double standards are pretty much the only standards we have. In a perfect world, a queer actor playing a straight character would be seen as a double standard, because in a perfect world, not only would there be no racism, sexism or homophobia now, there would be no racism, sexism or homophobia ever. The reason why it's offensive for a cisgender actor to play a transgender character is because there are so few roles for trans and non-binary actors to play to begin with. In a perfect world, anyone will be able to look towards the media and name more than a handful of diverse, well-rounded characters that represent their particular demographic. I mean, I think a lot of the problems with cisgender actors playing transgender characters could probably be alleviated somewhat by simply employing more trans and non-binary actors in the industry as a whole. I'm bisexual, and I personally don't have a problem with straight actors playing gay characters. And that's mainly because I know that a lot of gay actors are already working 
working in the industry. Admittedly, Hollywood doesn't actively seek out gay characters as much as it defaults to straight ones, and that gay actors as a consequence don't often get to play characters of their own sexuality. So the issue of trans and non-binary representation is important, but equally important, if not more so, is the employment of trans and non-binary actors in the industry as a whole. The community will probably be less up in arms over the casting of a cisgender actor in a transgender role if trans and non-binary actors could actually get some work, either playing those characters or being allowed to do their jobs as actors and appear in things the same way that other actors do. At present, roles are so scarce that trans actors not getting trans roles is a bit like asking children to play dwarf characters because they didn't know any dwarf actors to play those parts. It's the same kind of problem and you can't exactly be surprised when the underrepresented parties get rightfully pissed off. The only real long-term solution to the underrepresentation of certain ignored stratas of humanity and the scrutiny that accompanies the small handful of attempts to represent them is simply for artists to step forward confidently and open the floodgates. It makes me laugh how Hollywood is currently at the most global and international it's ever been and attempts to make its output as broadly marketable as possible, and all that ever seems to mean to my studio executives is more white heterosexual boys. Because as of current, it is provable and demonstrable that Hollywood still has a problem with the representation of women, race and queer folk. So I end this editorial by simply imploring that Hollywood, after all these years, finally come out the closet. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time. And now I've got to make a moral decision as to whether or not I want to review The Danish Girl when it's out. Dick.